What is the professional licensing consequences and employment consequences of being charged with a crime? Uh, I feel this question a lot from healthcare providers, members of the armed forces, other people in the legal profession, and the answer to it is extremely fact specific and it depends which specific profession you're in. As it relates to employers, the first place that you can go to to get that kind of answer is in the handbook. For example, uh, clients that are involved in Boeing or involved in Microsoft, as in general, uh, a criminal charge, in my experience, is not a basis for dismissal. I suppose if the criminal charge involved behavior as it relates to fraud or dishonesty or deceit or to those businesses, that's a different matter altogether. But a random criminal charge, a uh, assault problem with their spouse, a prostitution charge, something like this, does not directly affect employment. Other situations, however, uh, when it comes to professional licensing is a bit different. For example, healthcare providers have a responsibility to practice with reasonable skill and safety of their patients. If the criminal charge is a reflection of your inability to practice with reasonable skill and safety, you may need to self-report not because of the criminal charge itself, but because you violated one of the basic tenets of that profession. And there may be similar issues surrounding lawyers with uh, dishonesty and deceit. It is, as a general policy, as a general, as a general piece of advice, a criminal charge is not enough in and of itself for, in my opinion, in most most cases, and I have to be very careful using generalities, for, for, for professionals to self-report. Criminal convictions are a different matter altogether. For example, with the Washington State Bar, as of January 1st, 2014, if you're convicted of a felony within 30 days, you must report that to the Washington State Bar Association. So when you're charged, it's really important to look at the facts that you have, reflect on your responsibilities to your profession, look at the guidelines, the ethical guidelines to your profession, and make a decision on whether or not there is an affirmative responsibility or not to report. As it relates to employment, in my opinion, absent it affecting your employer directly or it being outlined in your employee handbook, I do not believe in general there is a responsibility to self-report. I think this gets people down the road at least of thinking about this topic and breaking it down into its components so that it doesn't, uh, the stress and worry relating to a pending criminal charge or the possibility of a criminal charge doesn't keep them up too late at night.